And we're going to start off this week by apologizing to everyone listening for at the end of that really cool music and countdown. You have to see us and you have to listen <laughs> to us. But you know what? You tuned in, watching, listening, whatever, so it's kind of on you. I don't feel bad for you. I blame you. You did it. You asked for this, so we're going to give it to you on another episode. Here today on a Friday, a Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion Friday uh, edition of Dirt to Dust presented by Outlaw Offroad. Uh, I know we are filming this, Caleb, before kind of the festivities go and mm-hmm. get underway. I am about to, uh, very, very short distance from here, the 4 by e is getting some parts tossed back on it. Um, just got just landed back in North Carolina uh, last week from uh, an extended stay, about three months that it stayed at Next Venture Motorsports out in Colorado. Got done with my Moab, left it there. Dan Four out there decided to throw the catalog at good old Four by Elon, <laughs> and uh, just that. ran out of time. Didn't get some stuff coded and everything. It came back. I posted a couple of pictures online. Um, a lot of aluminum, <laughs> a lot of aluminum, uh, oh, yeah. which is great. Nice, lightweight aluminum. We know it's strong. It's on 46. A lot of those parts are on 46.99, so no no strength issues, but had to get everything pulled off, got got everything painted, mostly black and some 4 by e blue. That's all going back on. I was just up there a little bit ago. Uh, fender liners were back in, a little blue accents. That's done. Um we were having a check engine light issue and a limp mode issue where we thought we were having an issue with a um, tone ring on a axle hmm. shaft. Okay. So, and it got worse after it got back from Colorado. It was drivable before. It actually did it to me twice. And anytime it would get above 55 miles an hour, it'd start looking for that. And it would throw it into limp mode. I'd have to pull over, use the taser, reset, go back and do it again. Well, when we pulled the axle shafts out, the left one was twisted. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I mean, twisted. So were I'm sure there's some things. Shots? I'm sure there's some. No, no, they were aftermarket. Um, they were a brand that I had. We, w- I won't go into the brand, but it was a brand I was not wanting to use for mm-hmm. quite some time. And that brand assured me they had corrected their problems. So being the idiot that I am was like, okay, if you think your problems are fixed and you want to sell through Outlaw Offroad again, put a set in my Jeep. I'll take it to Moab. If they survive, we can talk. Um, they didn't survive. (laughs) (laughs) They they did. They did not survive. But in in fairness to me, we were having, I was having check engine light issues and not limp mode, but I was having that issue before we hit the first trail. It went into limp mode at the bottom of the first hill, um, on hell's revenge on our shakedown run. And I had to figure out that as long as we kept it in four low, I never had any problems. But once it got to that speed on the highway and it started really looking for that and, and needing that ABS sensor, it was just freaking out. We did find a couple of chips and a couple of teeth on the tone wheel. I still think the overall issue on the right rear was it was an improper press depth on the tone ring. So Hmm. for anybody who doesn't know, there's a tone ring that's pressed onto the axle. It's just basically little, little teeth. And a sensor plugs in and sits, you know, half a millimeter, millimeter away from it. And it reads those teeth magnetically and that forms, you know, the faster it sees teeth going, the faster it knows you're going. The slower it sees it and it compares all that to a computer table and knows how fast you're going. When it misses teeth or does all that, it gives what's called implausible data. Computer freaks out and does computer freaking out things. So we got some brand new axle shafts from Revolution Gear and Axle. Uh, great company there. Uh, they are they are actually a sponsor of Trail Days, so they stepped up. I called them this weekend. I was like, guys, we got a problem. <laughs> I got to leave for Jeep Invasion, and I can't drive this thing on I forty. Like, I'm gonna have to like. Tra- I was like, am I gonna have to trailer this thing and just drive slow, like for yeah. Jeep Invasion? And credit to Revolution, they were like, say no more. Don't even worry about it. We got you. They got me a set of axle shafts out. They have currently been. We finished pressing in the studs and tack welding them. Um, cause people, when you have, when you have studs, you have to put in axle shafts, tack weld the back of them yeah. for the love of the Lord. <laughs> tack weld that goes a long studs. way. <laughs> so Trent up there at the shop, he was tack welding them in They're in there. They're on wheels are back on. The only thing left before I came down here to film was, um, just bolting up the bumpers. Winch tray was already back on tow hooks were back on. They were putting the, uh, the front bumpers, the b- front bumper skin back on. So I uh, should be leaving for Jeep Invasion prior to sunrise tomorrow morning. Um, of course, by the time everybody watches this, it'll be well underway. 
uh, the festivities will be. So if you're listening or watching and you're a Jeep individual, you're probably watching from Jeep Invasion. And uh, we're going to give you some cool one or two things to do outlaw related while you're at Jeep Invasion um, yep. as soon as we get in to this to this episode. We are going to talk about we're going to talk a little bit about Jeep Invasion. Um, a couple other events. We had one just this past week that canceled, unfortunately. Talk a little bit about uh, some other events, some trail days stuff. Um, we're going to do uh, our picks again. I don't know if it's actually going to be a top three, but our picks, Doug and Caleb's picks again, see if we agree uh, or disagree there. And then we are going to do a little bit of an extended uh, mailbag. Well, I think we got five, maybe four questions and then a little hate today. And we're going to, you know, we oh, love yeah. to address. <laughs> we love to address the hater aid. And according to the hater oh, aid, yeah. I am a politician but I guess not one that should run for office, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I have no desire there. So we'll get into all of that. But without further ado, let's get into the episode. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? <laughs> This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. You know, we've seen that intro like a hundred times now. And one of my favorite shots that I put in there is still 4,629 launching off the start line of the new livery. I should have watched that. Yeah. I I promise it's it's faster than the camera looks like. (laughs) It's still one of my favorite shots. So just such a cool shot. We were, there was a, there was a little behind the scenes. Everybody thinks, and you kind of do, everybody thinks we're in your race car and you're at the start finish line. Like it's, it's super tense and everybody's like, you know, stomachs and knots and all that. And there is, there is a little bit of that. Like, I think before you kind of get to it, I think for me, when I get like three cars back, it Mm kind of changes. And mine's like this thing, like an hour before the race, it's all jokes. We're kind of making light of it. There's probably a little bit of using humor to mask the, outright you know fear of what's going to happen i don't know if fear is the right word but uncertainty for sure yeah but then when you get on the line you start you know if you got a good co-driver driver driver relationship you start cutting jokes and whatnot and that one was the joke there was if i could put it on two wheels or not and (laughs) and and in that case that was koh so we were in the car discussing uh what we were going to do and our decision was to let john williams who was in the ford performance school bronco on our inside we were going to let him go we wanted to let him go we yeah. knew that some people were getting tires taken out and all that and we wanted to have him kind of clear our path for us <laughs> <laughs> all the way to turkey claw um it, it worked out because we didn't blow any tires but it also didn't mm-hmm. work out because we were faster than him and i was like get out of the way <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is the second race in a row that I was yelling at John Williams' rear bumper to get out of my way because I did give the same little, thing in Arizona last year. Um, just give him a little love tap. Ended up That's all. Yeah, it was. I don't know what it. I just need to stop following John. <laughs> I need to do that. Sorry, John. So anyway, I digress. So we did say this is the um, this is the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion kind of episode because that's what's going on right now. You know, we yeah. release these episodes on Friday. This is day. This would be day two of the show. Uh, it started yesterday, Thursday, goes today, kind of when business picks up. And then, of course, tomorrow. In my years there, Friday afternoon is probably the second busiest, like Friday right before and right after lunch. Yeah. I think it feel like it starts dying down about 2.30, 3 o'clock. Sometimes it'll go to 3.30. And then Saturday, there for a couple hours, just all hell breaks loose. Oh, yeah. I am just interested, insanity. though, to see how it is this year because – I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on events so far this year about, you know, attendance is pretty good or even up, but sales mm-hmm. from vendors is down. Yeah, I've heard the, the people same. People are going to events, um, but they're not spending money. I don't, and I don't know that to be true. And I've heard that from some vendors. When when we as Outlaw go to events, we don't really sell stuff. We're just there to talk to people and brand, you know, brand recognition and all that. But I do know some of the some of the brands that actually make their make their deal, make their profit. 
um, you know, lighting companies, accessory companies, that kind of stuff. They have said that sales are down, even though attendance is is pretty. I think most of them are about the same. Mm-hmm. But I also talk to manufacturers and whatnot who have all complained, other than maybe one or two, that they are, you know, oh, we're down this year. And the economy's eh. And you always get in that kind of lull right before an election, too, of like everybody's kind of holding on to going like, mm, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's, so they hold on. When they say, mm, what's going to happen? They kind of hold on to that money, too. So Yeah. Um, well, and also something that I've seen, especially this year, um, this year was just like I noticed it more than any other year in the past, um, much more frequent sales throughout the year from these manufacturers. Yeah. Um, whereas before, I want to say like you almost only got really good deals at shows. Um, and now with the Black increase Friday, in, in yeah, increase of sales going throughout the year, people are like, oh, well, you know, I'm not worried about getting that 10% off now. I'll wait a couple weeks and wait till Labor Day or I'll wait till something else and, and, and score 15 off or 20 off or, you know, Black Friday and I'll get 25 off. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's always the the conundrum there. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I would, I would love to see some some more data on that event and see how attendance is this year versus sales. I know we are, know. We, we've taken a step back to kind of reformat our marketing position with Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. Um, so it'd be interesting to know whether, you know, we want to jump back in and, and have a spot inside and show off some rigs or we just want to be very selective and put our rigs in with, a, you know, work with other companies and put them in, put our rigs in their boots. Um, it'd be interesting That's to kind question. of do a little study on that. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to think because when you're in a, when you're in a, because we didn't have a booth last year. And when mm-hmm. it came up to looking at this year, we were like, man. Because we went last year and we went with a marketing plan. Yeah. You know, we did the sponsorship of the after party and we said, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And we had like six or seven rigs there. And we're going to put the race car here. We're going to put the Hellcat here. We're going to do this. We're going to do the Cades Cove. And from a marketing standpoint, it was an awesome year for us. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking about this year. And, you know, I don't know. I need to look at how Bronco Stampede did. Um, I did see a little bit more posting out of it this year, although I didn't see as many vendors in the pictures that I saw. The problem, mm-hmm. though, with Jeep Invasion, it's twofold. I've done a booth inside and I've done a booth outside as a as a shop. The booth outside, you can bring your Jeep in and out every day. Mm-hmm. So you can bring your Jeep in in the morning, you can park it, you can do the show, then you can go out. You can go to the parties, you can go to Hard Rock, you can go to Quaker Steak, you can do all that stuff. And then you just come back in in the morning, you can wash it if you want, you can do whatever you want. The negative for that is it's freaking, usually, it is freaking hot. hot. Now, earlier mm-hmm. this week, Weather was freaking beautiful. It's like 70, 75 degrees. I'm like, oh, this is great. Now you're getting into the upper 80s for, you know, today and tomorrow. It's right back to what it normally is. Granted, it's not in the 90s, but the upper 80s with some decent humidity. Luckily, humidity is a little bit lower this year. It's still hot and you're in the sun. Mm-hmm. You don't really, it's, it's kind of sucks being out there. And they moved where the outside vendors used to be now versus where they were a couple of years ago. But again, you get to drive your Jeep in on it every day. Being inside, you definitely get the benefit of more foot traffic. That's where the food's at. That's where the, you know, that's where most, more vendors are there. The big boys are in there. Um, Outlaw's always been in there. We did have a auxiliary booth outside one year just where we were doing the drawing sign up where we had like one Jeep and a 10 by 10 10 out there and we put like one person out there. Mm-hmm. Problem is when you go in there, you can't move the vehicle. Right. So if you put three or four vehicles in a booth, which we would need to do as a shop, now that's three or four vehicles you can't take to Cades Cove. You can't take to the parties, all that. Now you lose a lot of marketing ability. You lose a lot of marketing. And then strolling around last year, I saw the people that were selling stuff were getting some foot traffic. The people mm-hmm. that weren't selling stuff were not seeing as much foot traffic. And I've seen that in years past when we had a booth. You get those spikes in people, and then they kind of drop off. But, you're again, you're just there to talk to people. Um, you see some people there, make some connection, do some networking. And it's, and it's worth it from that standpoint. Because honestly, I mean, the organizers aren't killing it. They're not charging, overcharging on booths, in my opinion. I think they're 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 charging fair amounts for the booths, so mm-hmm. it's worth it for most companies just to go there and hang out. But five years ago, there wasn't as many shops there. Now, like every mom and pop shop is there. It's mm-hmm. hard to stand out. So when you're looking at a marketing perspective, it's the same thing we talked about with Mob Moab. When you go to EJS, it's hard to stick out from a marketing standpoint. Everybody's posting from EJS. Same thing from Jeep Invasion. So I think you know I like going. But it's hard to stand out just saying, well, I'm going to stroke a check for a booth and go to the booth and do nothing else. I think you got to diversify the exposure. And that's what we did last year. And we're doing mm-hmm. it to a certain extent this year. And then we'll see how we move how we move going forward. But at the end of the day, it's a huge event. 
mm-hmm. and it ain't going anywhere. So you got to figure right. out how to work within the confines of that for your brand, whether you're a manufacturer and you're going there to sell stuff, whether you're a dealer and you're going there to sell stuff, whether you're shopping, whatever you're doing, because um, it ain't going anywhere. Um, and again, like I said, it's a huge event. So it's kind of like anybody who's anybody is there. So I'm going this year for a couple days, um, but I'll be heading out here tomorrow, Saturday. Um, got some stuff I got to do back in North Carolina, but there is a bunch of outlaws hanging around throughout the weekend. Some coming in early, some coming in late, and then some staying, several staying um, from start to finish. So we'll see yeah. how it does. We'll be out there at the party um, tonight. Uh, I'll be out there at the party tonight at Quaker Steak and Lube hanging out. I know we got a lot of people going to Hard Rock tomorrow night, and a lot of outlaws going out to Quaker tonight. So, we'll see how it goes. I hope it's I hope it's huge. I hope it's awesome. I hope it's not. I hope it bucks the trend of what I've heard about other events this year. And then, of course, in other event news, next weekend uh, we've got another event coming up. The annual event down in uh, Georgia. Is it Georgia? Is yeah, right? Jasper, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Is that is that uh, that's sheriffs right? Sheriff Jeep yeah, Fest. Sheriff's yeah. Jeep Fest. And that's a good one, um, especially it's got a lot of local wheeling around there. <clears throat> Excuse mm-hmm. me. Uh, it's got some wheeling. Um, it's got a really cool um, obstacle course. They seem to be throwing more and more rocks at it every single year. <laughs> um, why not? It, why not? <laughs> um, that's definitely more of a, I don't want to say more of a wheeling event, but it's definitely got more it wheeling is. involved. Yeah, I think so. yeah. um, to the point where I've heard multiple vendors say, yeah, I don't really care about having a booth, but I love going down there to wheel and just hang out for the weekend. Yep. Yeah, um, I think Ryan goes down there from Atlanta, takes Reaper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just hangs out, has a good time, does the party, and throws Reaper at some rocks. Yeah. And Which, Reaper hey, loves the rocks. So. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I don't hate on that. I do not hate on that. But that's always, I think it's pretty much every year. It's the weekend right after. Because all the vendors from around the country, they're already here. Yep. So they go a few hours down the road and they're there at Sheriff's. It makes a whole lot of sense. Um, I totally get it. It's not like, you know, you're at EJS and now you got to come all the way across the country for uh, Jeep Jeep Beach. Um, and then you got to hang out for three weeks before Florida Jeep Jam. So I think it, it makes a lot of sense. It's a great event. I have not made it there simply because generally this is the time of year where it's Jeep Invasion, Crandon. Jeep Invasion, Crandon. Uh, oh. I am not racing Crandon this year um, for some marketing. Yeah, there's... Yeah, Ultra Fours, it's that thing's a mess. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we did yeah. pick up, or we are going to race that uh, endurance race that outside of Ultra Four in December yeah. in Texas, but we'll see. I, I Miles Hasselquist actually texted me today. He's kind of the announcer for Ultra Four. He goes, Are you racing Crandon? I was like, Nah, you know, we'll see about Oklahoma. That's nationals. Um, but Crandon's not a points race now. It was a race, and then it wasn't, yeah. and then it was, and then it wasn't going to happen at all. And then everybody was thinking, well, maybe it's just 4,400s. So apparently it is happening now. Um, it is going to be a mixed field again, 45, 46, 48, which is the reason about half the 4,600 guys I know aren't going because they get run over by 44s and 48s. So there's not going to be much of a 4,600 field. I don't. I think Lauren said he's not going if there's not some competitors going. So I don't think Lauren's going. I don't think Bailey's going. I'm not going. So we'll see. It's pretty much going to be – focused on 45s and 48s which the coverage was last year anyway even though yeah. we were smoking 75 percent of their field so that's not a thing but we do have the oklahoma davis oklahoma coming up in october yeah so yeah so this this year i will not be i will not be at crandon for labor day um i think i'm gonna be at home like building some furniture for my son's room or something <laughs> like that so super i mean super not duper a fun, uh, so not a bad but plan. we will have a slight presence down yeah. there i think ryan ryan's going and taking reaper so that'll be cool yeah and then uh in other news um also regarding events um i was a little heartbroken to hear this um i was really looking forward to to going and um potentially having the lj there too um but we got word this week that jeep tastic is uh canceled yep unfortunately yep. Jeep-tastic. and that was i think that was a combination of things too their marketing had really fallen off Mm-hmm. They had some, the organizer of that event had some really, really uh, heavy family stuff going on. Yeah. And just wasn't able to commit to marketing the event and getting it organized. They were having to switch venues because the venue they'd been at for a couple of years was being sold by the owner. So they couldn't have the venue. They couldn't have the event there. They moved it to a place that I thought was going to be an awesome place. I hope they try to bring it back there next year. Um, we'll see. I, I don't know. Uh, generally, if, if you cancel an event like this, it's going to be really, really hard to bring back, and that I hate that. Hmm. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, the Jeep Tastic is canceled, unfortunately, um, and we'll wait. We will wait with fingers crossed for 2025 and see if they if they bring that back. Um, an event that is not canceled, 
Outlaw Off Road Trail Day is coming up. <laughs> Somebody said it. I was coming in the right shop. And a customer came soon. in and goes, Hey, man, you ready for trail days? I'm like, What are you talking about? He goes, This is like three weeks. I was like, Yeah. Up, he goes, No, seriously, it's three weeks. <laughs> like, Son of a. It's, I was it's like, Man, right I better the make corner. the trail list. I mean, I've got yeah. half the trail list in my head already. And we yeah, kind of joked about it. I was like, Man, it's Windrock. I can make the trail list in five minutes out of my head. It's Windrock. That for a year, yeah. that was my second home in Reaper. So uh, yeah. we'll be ready for that. Um, I've noticed. Um, some of those spots, I think about half the spots we talked about last week are gone now. Um, I noticed some several signups um, on there this week. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there's still a few spots. Check the website, theoutlawoffroad.com forward slash trail days. I think beginner may be done um, and advanced may even be done, but I think there's some intermediate spots left. So just check. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, as soon as those spots close up, I will I will close those down, and you won't be able to register yeah. for them anymore. Yeah, but I know close. it's if it's they're not incredibly already. close. Yeah, um, if they're not already. So I would actually like it to not be a full event. I know mm-hmm. we, we set the number really high. Like, man, if we get this many people, we can handle it. I'd rather not. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it would make our life a lot easier. <laughs> I would love. I mean, um, I would love. I mean, yeah, we could deal with 80 people if we had to, but I would love it to be like, High fifties to low sixties, I think would be perfect. I mean, yeah, and I think great. we're we'll we'll ride in we're mid fifties yeah. right now. So, um, so yeah. if nobody else signs up, I think I'd be happy. But you know, we'll see. We've got the trail leaders to do it, or the well, trail leader slash trail bros. Hey, trail bro. Um, so we can do that. I just you know, I think it'd be cooler to be able to meet more people, talk with more people, smaller groups on the trail. Um, I'm, I'm here for that. So hopefully that's what happens, but that one is definitely not canceling. As a matter of fact, I think as of last check, every s- company sponsor is going to have a rig there. That's every awesome. One of them. Yeah. I think yeah. so. I think I'm Kyle even from Redeem is trying to be there. Um, I'm talking to Matt, uh, while I'm here at Jeep invasion about who's coming for them. I know there is Adam from is bringing the LJ from rock crawler. Um, Dan from Next Venture will not be here, but he is leaving one of the Jeeps behind. And I think uh, Tyler is going to fly back out, grab little Willie, and come wheeling. So that's going to be cool. Um, so yeah, that's going to be that's going to be pretty pretty freaking awesome. So looking forward to that. So you guys be on the lookout for that. We did start the Facebook group for the attendees. We got some details going out there. I think that's it that we got on trail days for now. What you know, we don't have to say it here. We've already got the Facebook group. We got the web page up. So um, yeah. We are getting close now. We're right on the cusp of turning into September. September means October is right around the corner. In October, one of my favorite events of the year, Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Love that. Play. Love, love, love that event. We it go is just, there every it's year. growing. We go big. Every year. Yeah. It's huge. It's getting, I know huger is not a word, but every year it seems like it gets huger. Yeah. And, and I uh, love it. It's growing year over year for sure. Um I'm gonna try to be try my best to be there. It would it would be awesome if the LJ's done and I have it there by then. Um, but I've also got a wedding to attend in, in Pigeon Forge, <laughs> like that that uh like a couple days after that. So I might be yeah. driving from Myrtle Beach straight to Pigeon Forge, but that's we'll, not we'll that see what bad happens. Of a drive, man. Nah, it's like six it's hours. Not. It's not horrible. Come over to Asheville, hit 26, boogie all the way. It's like a four and a half hour, five five four and a half hour drive. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Quit complaining. You're fine. Yeah, you go right but, through the you go right through the low country, right through the the upstate of South Carolina. It's not a bad drive. Drive the yeah, it's it's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, but that's a great event, and we'll be back at um, uh, Crooked Hammock again this year. They were awesome last year. Let us set up our tent out there. They had the band. We were doing wings and the beers, and we had a couple of jeeps out there. I think we had the glad the Hemi Gladiator out there and the Hellcat. Mm-hmm. Um, no idea what we'll have out this year. Who knows? Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, but I, lo- I just love that event. It's at the beach. It's right about that time of year where accommodations aren't expensive. The weather's usually low eighties. Yeah, it's super comfortable. Is not what it is like right now. It's not like eighty five with ninety five percent humidity. It's more like eighty to eighty five with like sixty to seventy percent humidity, which may seem like a lot to you desert people, but out here in the southeast, it's pretty freaking awesome in the fall. That's pretty tame. It's, <laughs> it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Yeah. And a lot of people go through there. It is a it is a vendor show. You know, they mm-hmm. have the obstacle course, which is cool, but it is first and foremost a vendor show. It is the Myrtle Beach version um, of Jeep Invasion. And they do the beach crawl. You know, they get some special permission for that. I just think Chris, the organizer there, just does an outstanding job um, at, at, at listening to vendors, too, and changing it every year a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. 
to make it better and better and better. So I can't wait to see what he's got this year. We're going to have our new booth design out there, our new rectangle design versus our old rectangle design. You guys want to see what I'm talking about? Go to Jeep, go to Myrtle Beach Jeep Jam. So, um, and then on, I guess on other events, we do have some gears and beers coming again, some outlaw gears and beers. We just had one in Charlotte. Absolutely. Yeah. Last Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, then we've got another one, which is probably going to be scheduled because by the schedule, that would be the Friday of trail days. So my guess is that Charlotte will probably just do what they did this past, this past month and just reschedule that, uh, one week into the future. And then, uh, Nashville has theirs coming up, um, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, the ninth. Is that right? The ninth of September, I think. I would say ninth of September. It's usually, I want to say the second Monday of each month. Um, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but if that's the that ninth, be, yep, then, that's the ninth. Then that yep. would be it. That uh, and that's ninth. at Tailgate Brewery in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So just south of the shop. Um looks like there that one's starting to grow too. Um Candace sent me a few videos of uh of last week last this past month. And uh there were several vehicles, um a couple dozen, a good, good mix of of Jeeps, Broncos, Toyotas. Um, which is what I, I kind of envisioned this event to be on a monthly basis is not just Jeeps, but a little bit of everything, some overlanders, um, anyone who's got like a flex ramp to come out and bring the flex ramp out, let people test it out, test their vehicles out. Um, Charlotte, that's been, that's been a hit. Um, people love getting on the flex ramp and, uh, shout out to Primal Brewery in Belmont because those guys have been really awesome to us and they just kind of let us take over their entire parking lot. Yeah, they um, do what a great it. job they Especially do. On I, Friday. I, I was there for this last one and they just man. They got servers out on the patio going to get food, mm-hmm. going to get drinks. It's freaking amazing. They do such a good job. Really, really good job. I don't I don't know that you can't really ask much more from a venue for what we need for a gears and beers outlaw off road event than what Primal Brewing in Belmont, North Carolina gives us. So and I did talk to Gerald down in Huntsville. They have a new location. I got a video of it. It's freaking sweet. Um, I don't have a date. I know it'll be in September. I don't have a date yet, but he sent me a video of that being like, Hey, let's move it here. And it was just, it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty sweet place. I don't know the name of it. I don't live down there. Um, but the video and the pictures that I saw, uh, it's pretty freaking sweet. Pretty yeah. Freaking the location sweet, so. there, I, I can't off the top of my head remember which brewery it is. Yeah, um, okay. but he was looking <laughs> at, uh, changing it from a Saturday night event to either a Thursday or Friday night event. Um, which I think personally will will gain a lot more attention, especially um, with with that location being as cool as it is. Uh, be on the lookout for um, Outlaw Offroad Huntsville social media. Um, as soon as I have that information, I will be sure to update everyone. Um, and we're going to get it kicked off again. Fall is the best time to do gears and beers. It's not too hot. Um, I would love to do like a Jeep Toberfest themed <laughs> uh, gears and beers. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I know um, some of the brewers we've talked about actually have special uh, Oktoberfest yep. brews, uh, so it'd be sure cool do. to kind of help help them launch their their seasonal brew with a uh, with a Jeep event, which would be super cool. But Jeep Toberfest would be uh, pretty fun. That's a good see one, me yeah. in some. Uh, That's pretty sweet. What are the, I like that name, Jeep Toberfest. Got to wear like the uh, what are the German the shorts and the the high socks. The later hosen. Later hosen. Later hosen, eh? <laughs> later hosen. Yeah, we're going to have to show that. up in uh, Outlaw yeah, later hosen. Oh, <laughs> Somebody stop this, man. All right, jeez. I think that's all we got on events. Um, we covered yeah, all that. Yeah, which is a lot. Yeah. That, yeah, there's, I mean, it's that time of year. And, and there's probably, we'll probably have even more uh, next week once I look back at the schedule again and see what we've got coming up. It's just, it's a great... You know, spring is heavy, heavy, heavy on events. Fall is heavy, heavy on events. And we're only mm-hmm. about, you know, we're, what, 30 days away now from fall? Yeah. And, like, Summer's especially in the over. south, we've got a good 90 days left of, you know, good weather, doesn't get cold, you know, depending on what you think is cold. You know, sometimes we get easy, week, great wheel and weather well into December here. So, oh, yeah. And, and even event weather, at least until Thanksgiving. So, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe I'm going to look into look into that jeep toberfest that'd be pretty cool um so now we've got now let's move on moving on to our next our next uh our next little segment today is our top blanks <laughs> our preferred blah blah blanks um <laughs> tell talk to me right. what do you got for us what are we going to be talking about today a little bit on 
what we like and maybe what we don't like or our top threes or top ones or top twos. What, what, what do we got going yeah. today? Uh, well, last week we did, um, if I can remember correctly, I want to say wheels, Watch. tires, um, accessories, lighting. I don't know. We covered a lot. Um, we did a bunch, yeah. But what I don't remember us covering, uh, bumpers, armors, you know, fenders, skid plates, stuff like that. Um axles but i would love to talk about and see maybe not make it so jeep centric but just talk about some other brands for maybe tacoma or just toyotas in general uh some of the new chevy stuff um i know there are multiple brands pushing for those vehicle platforms as well so i want to give them some love um yeah and then we'll get into our um we've got an awesome bunch of uh mailbag questions too so we'll get into that later a little bit of an extended mailbag but today for uh doug and caleb's picks let's kick this off with bumpers armor fender skid plates um so any, body armor any type of those, stuff yeah body armor yeah. exterior type of stuff i mean obviously i'm a fan of i mean i've got a couple that are my personal favorites that mm-hmm. i've used i know i understand them obviously next venture motorsports being kind of at the top of the pile there I mean, now on the 4xe, it's got front bumper, rear bumper, sliders, skid plates, fenders, inner and outer. Um, and then, of course, the most powerful thing, a couple of Next Venture logos. Um, it's just super stout stuff. I mean, it's race proven. Um, I've got a lot of their stuff. I've got all that stuff on 4699. Obviously, I don't have their skid plates because it's not a factory underbelly. It won't. They don't fit. But I do have their corner armor. Um, I do have the same. It's basically the same sliders, the same bumpers. That are on forty six ninety nine are on the four by e. Um, obviously, the ones on the four by e are a little prettier. They're not as scuffed up yet, uh, although they won't ever be as bad as forty six ninety nine is. <laughs> I hope um, not. And they have yeah. a full suite, yeah. man. They have other stuff. They've got you know they've got other stuff, but they you know I pretty much got the the vast majority of the catalog on the four by e. So I know that stuff. I love it. I, I really like the fenders because in the JL, it's very hard to find a fender that looks better than the factory shaved. Correct. They did a really, really good job on that. And what Next Venture was able to do with their aluminum and their processes and their and their designing and engineering, they were able to kind of mimic that to an extent with with some minor changes for what it is and do that OE style look with an aluminum fender. Um, it's pretty awesome. With, with not an excessive amount of weld lines, it's pretty it's pretty good what they were able to do. It's yeah, impressive. It, almost, it, it really is what it is. So yeah, it I, that, that is a big thing for me. Oh yeah, but. Well, yeah, kind of. Um, but you see, like, aluminum with compound bins, it's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, and not a lot of people out there doing it that aren't, you know, there's a couple people doing it in, like, you know, composite and plastic. But Next Venture is really the only one doing it like that. Um, also, I'm a big fan of Moto Built. Love what they're doing with their bumpers. That frame chop bumper they got is pretty, pretty legit. And Next Venture has one of those, too. Um, but I really like the, the, the frame chop bumper that Moto Built's got. Tomahawk. I love the Moto Built roll cage Ooh, uh, for the JL. Yeah. It's freaking oh, yeah. sweet. Um, Rock Solid's got a good one too, but I just think the Moto Built one for me, for my personal, um, I love it. I think, I don't know that this has been said in public yet, but it's um, pretty much a 90% certainty that Reaper is getting a Moto Built cage in the near future. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been hard to keep JL that one quiet. Down there right now, getting, getting a cage, probably getting a cage. It's also getting axles and long arms and a bunch of other stuff. But the the word was if he was going to order one cage, he was just going to order two. So, <laughs> and it is yep. the Moto Built because Ryan agrees with me on on that Moto Built cage. It's 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 pretty slick. It um, is functionality it's, wise. I think Rock Solid probably gets the nod there. But um, for me, just what it looks like, I love the Moto Built. Um, and then I think otherwise armor. I still I know they've fallen off a couple of years on the market, but Artec is still a big one for me. They're still doing some Toyota stuff. They're still doing a bunch of Jeep stuff. They're doing good stuff. And then maybe Toyota specific um, C4 is always kind of my top mm-hmm. at Victory 4x4 for the Toyota oh, yeah. market. And and they're getting into some other – Victory's getting into some other stuff besides Toyota too, and so is C4. So um, on your non-Jeep front would be Victory 4x4 and C4. Um, Artec kind of hybrid between the two, mm-hmm. and then Next Venture and Motobuilt. Now, that's not to say there's not a ton of other great – armor companies out there there is you know generally make some good stuff but i'm just saying for me what i've used what i have personal experience with um you know there was some moto built stuff that came off the four by e to put the next venture stuff on there when i personally purchased that product so 
Uh, I think it, all the fenders and stuff were moto built, and that came off in favor of the next venture motorsports, mainly because of that marketing partnership there. But nothing, nothing wrong with that moto built stuff. So no, that's my two Jeep, my two Toyota, and then my one hybrid. What say you? Nice. Um, man, this is tough for me because I've I've got experience with several companies, um, and I've I've worked for a couple companies too. So I got to see kind of behind the scenes. Uh, for those who don't know, um, JCR and Victory 4x4 under the same rooftop. Um, they're just sister companies to the same brand. Um, I got to work for JCR for a number of years. I uh, I really liked seeing the behind the scenes and, and how they manufactured their product, which is pretty cool. Um, but I think for me personally, the nod's going to go to CAFAB. Um, that's what the LJ is wrapped in. Um, I helped Donovan design and mock up and measure and, and brought the LJ to him a couple times. So a lot of those products were modeled off of my LJ. Um, and there's actually some more new product coming out. Um, Another great American today's, company. Today's Friday. So by early next week, um, there are going to be some stretch corners and possibly boat side rockers coming out for the LJ. Um, Donovan. Yeah. Donovan's um, staying very, very busy out in Chattanooga. Um, but I've I've personally seen his shop as well, seen like yep, his quality welds are just awesome, and which I think is hilarious is that his wife can weld almost just as well as, as him. So, uh, uh, correct my, me, sir, she does it all better than him. Let's just <laughs> let's just be honest, <laughs> Lindsay. If you ever hear this, hats off to you, girl. The, the, the problem is Donovan's like, like nine good. and a half feet tall, and it's a little gangly, man. It's a little <laughs> little hard, a little hard. He's got to have like raised tables and everything. It's it's hilarious, but no, Lindsay's Lindsay, she's legit, man. Yeah, Linz. I think it's yeah. older, so. Um, but yeah, so Catfab's gonna get my nod to my number one pick just because I've, the LJ is wrapped in their stuff. I've bought everything they've they've come out with, and if I were to run a uh, spare tire, Donovan has developed probably the most stout spare tire carrier for a TJ LJ that I've seen. Um, but like you said, um, yeah, like yeah. you've said, the Motobilt love them. Uh, Dan yeah. is doing a ton of awesome things. Um, and bringing a, a lot American of really company. cool products to, yeah. to I mean, every platform, really. Uh, from the Bob Bed on the Gladiators, which is pretty innovative, yeah. to even resurrecting TJ, LJ, YJ stuff. And you look at El Jefe that they just built. Um, it's a YJ that stretched like an LJ with 43s and nasty 6.6 yeah, liter nasty. LS. Like, it's incredible. And they've, they've just figured out how to bring products to market to uh, build some really, really badass stuff. Um, it is nasty. Yeah, they do. Good yeah, stuff. and then I would say, uh, yeah, I think I'm agree with you on on next venture as well. Uh, being having the opportunity to meet Dan, another Dan, <laughs> um, and then Outlaw as a brand, building that relationship with them. Um, I've gotten to see a lot of really cool products from them. I've got we've gotten to pick their brain on the podcast. Um, so I definitely want to throw them a little shout out. Um, they're doing some cool stuff. I hope to see TJ LJ stuff in the future from them, just because I'm very biased. Um, but overall, um, super cool stuff. It looks great. Another great American company. Um, for non-Jeep stuff, um, yeah, I mean, there's just, I'm not super versed in that world. So I think I'm going to leave that up to you. The one I'm really just familiar with is Victory. So I don't want to like mm-hmm. lean that way just because you said that. Yeah, um, stuff just looks but so good. It's so clean. Yeah, no. Um, they're so they really great stuff. And um, you can't really go wrong with it. They're up in Michigan. I know you hate Michigan, but uh, f- for, Besides that fact, uh, victory is great. Um, so I'm not super versed in in non Jeep bumpers and armor, so I'm gonna leave that one on you. I'm gonna have my opinion off to the side. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm just looking forward to see more American companies pop up and uh, and and create some really cool stuff. Um, design and, and get, innovation and technologies. Investment companies do up and not get bought by investment companies. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, a hundred percent see them running on their own without giant capital firms buying them. Um, I mean, honestly, anytime that we can see new innovative products pop out of an American made shop, like I'm, I'm going to help support that any way I can, uh, especially right. over brands that, uh, favor eBay, Amazon, or just selling out entirely. So, and moving on from that, um, I've got, Picks for axles. That's one we didn't talk about last week either. Oh, axles. Okay. And under axles, I can I guess we can also include axle shafts, gears, um, blockers, anything to do with with those things. We can make related. this whole drivetrain actually. Okay. I mean, 
for me, if we're going underneath and we're going to that mechanical, that mechanical thing, let's start. Let's start as we're leaving the transfer case, right? We're going to go drive shafts down to axles, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go into gears and axle shafts, and then you know stuff like that. So, for me, and I know they're not the only company out there, but I, I've just dealt with Adams and known have known James for a good number of years now, and all those guys out there. I've been to the shop, I've seen their production, I know what goes into it. You know, I've seen where they store their their bearings and their you know their their joints, and I mean, I've watched the balance machines. And that's Adams Drive Shaft and Off Road um, out of Henderson, Nevada, basically Las Vegas. Just say Vegas; they're mm -hmm. right outside of Vegas. Um, I, I just, I just don't have any issues with them. You know, I mean, they're, they're on the race car. They're on, they're on the four by e. Uh, one of them's already on the four by e. I have the other one um, to still put on the four by e. Actually, maybe if they're doing it right now, it was on the checklist. We'll see if they have time or not to do it. Um, I've, I've, we've, as an outlaw, we've probably sold thousands i mean it just it's just so many it's just so many um and we've never that, that really, number is not an exaggeration either it's, it, it can't it be. probably is thousands yeah it's got to be um we're just so good with them we just don't have any issues out of them um you know and when we've had you know on the rare occasion that we've had to have a warranty issue on one you know you break one you twist one whatever they've just always been there you know to, to give that support so I know a lot of people like Tom Woods. I'm sure it's a great company. I don't have any experience. I don't really have any experience with them. I've never had the need to to to, to kind of traipse outside of Adams because they're who I picked years and years and years ago, and and that's who we've stuck with, both to selling to customers on my personal rigs on the race car. Um, yeah, I don't have any issue there. And then moving down to axles, um, there's there's obviously not a ton of axle companies out there. Um, but I'd, I'd say for me, based on just what they have available, what you can do with them, um, how they're built, what they put in them, um, what you can customize, all that kind of stuff for a whole lot of reasons, I'm still going to go with Curry. You know, there's a reason that I picked Curry for the race car. They did not pick me. They did not come biting down my door and be like, hey, let me throw some axles. In. No, I reached out to them. And solicited them for the axles for forty six ninety nine, and will probably use their axles. If I switch axles, I will use their axles. I just don't know if I'm going to switch them yet in the four by e. Now that I know I twisted an axle shaft in Moab, that decision probably just got made for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but hey, these things happen, um, and it would be it would be Curry. It just would be Curry there for the axles, um, just based on a whole lot of things. You know, wall thickness, I, I just everything. I really really like what they're doing out there, especially since Casey's kind of taken the reins there in the last few years to really make that his thing. Um, I like Curry. And then for axle shafts, obviously RCV is a, is a top pick and revolution gear and axle would be picks for me over, you know, I mean, obviously there's custom stuff you can do out there. I mean, Curry, Curry custom makes some of their stuff, but as far as companies that you and I would know, everybody would know listening or watching would be RCV and um, which is, RCVs is what's in the race car, and then Revolution, which is now what's going in the 4xE in the rear, and then it is RCVs in the front. Um, I think we put RCVs in there. I think they may still. Again, there's so many things. There's PSC <laughs> on the checklist. It hasn't been installed yet. There's Armor yeah. Light on the checklist. We just haven't had time to do it. Right. So there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of parts up there. I just, I'm not caught up on what's all <laughs> installed, yeah. uh, what they're trying to do. They may be surprising me right now. So. There's a pallet up there with stuff on it. Uh, and there's just, you know, we got to get at, you know, um, who knows. So, yeah, I think for that. And then um, it's really, that's about as far as I'd go. I'd say, yeah, from drive shafts, axles, and then axle shafts and gears. That's kind of the thing. I mean, everybody knows Dana and the JLJT. They just fit. But yeah. I put Revolution right up there with them. And then I haven't been a fan of Yukon and the JLJT. Um, but I have no issues with Yukon and the older Jeeps and other stuff, mm -hmm. trucks, stuff like that. They're great. Um, but I still kind of put Revolution and Dana at the top for gears and then Revolution and RCV for axle shafts. Okay. So for <clears throat> moving down that same list for me, um, starting with drive shafts, I, I, again, I hate, I hate agreeing with you just to agree with you, but uh, I mean, Adams is super hard to beat when it comes to drive shafts. Um, hey man, when I'm right, when I'm you're right. when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have a failure, uh, if you even have a failure, uh, and you call them and they're like, "Hey, cool, no problem, we got you," and 
you know, they can get parts out to you in the middle of nowhere. Um, they're, they've become a household name in the off-road industry, really. Um, yeah. I will say that I do have a close second. I really do like working with Carolina Driveline <clears throat> out of uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Actually, very close to the new Outlaw shop. Um, I've talked to their guys a couple times. I've ran their drive shafts on previous builds, the uh, the JK action truck that I built on 40s. Um, I used Carolina drive lines on them, never had an ex- had a failure with them. And I put that that JK through some <laughs> horrible spots. Um, so both companies super easy to deal with. Um, both were, you know, on top of their customer service game and, and obviously very fair pricing. And like you said, there are plenty of other drive shaft companies out there. Tom Woods, J E real, uh, Oliver's and probably three or four more across the country. Um, we just don't, don't have experience with them as, as much to, to give yeah. them really that full nod of approval, not to say that they're bad or good, but, um, yeah, maybe we can just have some experience at some point, but right now it's just really hard to beat our, our top picks. And this is why it's our top pick. Um, uh, moving down the list for axles. Um, I've actually never used Curry axles, but I do know how stout they are just from industry presence and racing. Um, I do also, um, like the fusion fabbed axles. Um, those are pretty sick. Um, all of them are better than, well, the route that I went, let's just be honest. I went junkyard. Uh, so the, the Forbes welding and, and fabrication. <laughs> Forbes fab. <laughs> Hey man, uh, there's probably more junkyard swap axle builds out there than there are. I bought, you know, custom fab Curry's Dynatrax Fusion. Yeah, there there probably are. Um, because you know, it's money is money. <laughs> yeah, no, and uh, I'm I'm it glad I've gotten is. the experience to to do that, so I can at least talk in depth with somebody about junkyard axle swap. Uh, it's not the easiest thing, and if you're not doing all the work yourself, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but if you can weld yourself and you have the ability to, or you want to learn how to do these things in your garage, it's a great way to go. Um, they do have their downfalls. Um, but at the same time, you get a lot of experience out of it. Um, I'm excited to have eight lug axles under a Jeep regardless. Exactly. (laughs) Um, that eight lugs is better than five lugs any day. So I will, uh, I will still take it I'll take it as a learning experience. But if I had to do anything else on, on the LJ, um, I would be very, very hard pressed to not have some kind of fabricated axle housing underneath them, uh, just for the sheer that. strength. I love fabs. And, and, and yeah, weight. Reaper's got fabs. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted fabs under the race car, but Casey and Garrett at Curry were like, "No." Nah, from a marketing standpoint, we want to sell these seventy. So I had, I got seventies, yeah. but my heart, my heart is in a fabricated housing. <laughs> yeah, sure. they're uh, they're pretty badass. Spider and then, tracks, tube works, Curry, they're all mm-hmm. freaking, oh. super, super, super nice. I mean, tube works. You know, not a bad way to drop 60K. <laughs> no, if you want some dumb. trophy truck axles. <laughs> oh, right. 74 weld. Let's get some portals under your Bronco, bud. Oh, Those yeah. things are sweet. I mean, I'm seeing more and more portals. Um, 74 weld, obviously, for me, the way to go there. Um, most people watching this aren't going to know what I'm talking about, but 74 weld makes, they make portals. They make, they make portals for Jeeps. They make portals for mm-hmm. Broncos. That's your, that's your portals, people, and it's good quality, solid stuff. And mm-hmm. they make some pretty, they make some pretty slick stuff. I think they've even got some stuff now with like CTIS, Central Inflation System, and stuff like that in there. Wow, yeah. Then, yeah, then you get into crazy stuff. Spider. They've been kicking spider, it up the last couple of years for sure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. When um, you know, because they've always had, they're in all the Broncos, even Rance's um, non factory built, non Geyser brother built um, Bronco has seventy four weld portals in it. So um, great company, great people there. That's your stuff for, you know, the IFS type stuff, especially they they hit that game hard. But they also have portals for Jeeps, too. And, of course, portals being the way to get net ground clearance without a lift. That's why, you know, fit 40s with a two-inch lift because you're moving. Everything goes up. It's the only way. Yep. Portals is really the only way you're going to get net ground clearance. And by net ground clearance, axle tube differential, mm-hmm. all that good stuff. So that's all the things. For, yeah, that's where I'd go. Yeah, that would be a, uh, a good conversation for a future podcast of, like, portals versus you know tire size versus lift kit um you know if you were to start fresh with a build well, yeah, and have your choice of everything right yeah. now to build build a dream rig like how would you go about doing that because i think that would look a lot different now than it did even just three oh, yeah. four years ago absolutely absolutely I, you know five years ago in a jeep you're like portals whatever that's ifs and now you're like that's a that's got to be a oh, that's gotten sick <laughs> price is still price is still a thing you gotta you know it's a thing yeah 
but I mean, there's options. There's options. So yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely, for so that's, sure. That's where we are on drive line. Yeah, I think that's uh that's it for our top picks. If uh, top if stuff, anyone yeah. has recommendations on what they want to know, what our picks are for other pieces for any other accessories or anything like that, drop a comment below. Um, we would love to have the interaction with you and, and and give you our opinion and maybe steer you in the di- direction. Um, obviously, if you uh, give out a little shout out to Outlaw, if you if you are building something uh, in the southeast of the United States um, and you, you want some pretty professional people to build that rig for you, whether that's a Toyota, whether that's a Jeep, whether that's a Bronco, whether that's a race car, um, give Outlaw a call because we can definitely help you out with that. Our guys are pretty knowledgeable in everything that we've talked about and uh, might even have some different recommendations that Doug and I have talked about, which is totally fine. Yep. Uh, but moving on from that plug, uh, I want to get into is some it, of these. Is it mailbag time? It's mailbag time. Yes. Especially uh, <laughs> this first comment, man. Like, I, drink I was the hater cracking rate, baby. up when I, when I saw this. <laughs> Uh, so this is under the Outlaw Off-Road video for the steering stabilizers, um, more specifically the dual steering stabilizers and why they suck. Um, that has gotten us. That's gotten me personally a lot of hate. People are like <laughs> it really has very People, defensive. It's of a their sensitive dual subject. Stabilizers and just their steering yeah. stabilizers in general, which yeah. is fine. But geez, people lay off, man. But uh, the comment though, and I, I want you to address this. The comment was. Um, this guy should be a blue politician. <laughs> so uh, I talk to me a little means, bit about that. Oh, okay. He's a blue politician. Uh, I assume he means because I kind of equivocate a little bit on some things. And I do that in a lot of videos, though. Like, I'm there's not there's not just black and white in this stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and if that makes me political, yeah, probably. I mean, it's, yeah, I, it probably does. Um, but, yeah, sometimes without knowing... A, a person's specific situation, what their build is, sometimes what their budget, all those, without answering all those questions, it's very hard to get on a YouTube video and just go, hey, it's black and white, this is the way it is, and everything else sucks, And because it's really not true. If I say A, B for this person, C, D may not, may work for that. Like, you can't. You almost kind of have to equivocate until you know specifics. Now, once I know specifics, I can make a recommendation. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. But I need to know specifics, and it's hard for me to get out here and talk to thousands of people because thousands of people means thousands of unique situations, thousands of unique vehicles, builds, um, and, and you can't really just go on there and say, well, this is this is how it is. That's why you'll hear me go, well, this is my top pick, but there's also a lot of other great companies because it's true. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, well, if- you know, this is what I say about dual steering stabilizers. Yeah, I don't like dual steering stabilizers, but I will say I know – I know the point behind them or the original yeah. point. Now the point is mostly looks, but I know why people originally went with opposing steering stabilizers. doesn't mean I like them, but you know, I guess that makes me kind of political because I'm trying to like please everybody. But it's like Michael Jordan said, everybody buys shoes. Republicans buy shoes too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I don't no, mind pissing you... off some duck people like the hardcore yeah. duckers. I don't mind pissing them off. I don't mind pissing off the hardcore light bar people like that. Those people need to be talked to a little bit. But by and large, the, ma- the the vast majority of the industries, you know, I'll give some recommendations and we'll talk about it. But it's given some of it, too, is just giving information. And then the, the individual has to do with that information. It's up to them. We're all adults yeah. here. Right. I can't, Absolutely. I can't. I can. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So yeah. That makes me a, a politician. Nah, I don't think so. And honestly, if we shoot or shoehorned ourselves into into, <laughs> into one position and one position only, um, that would make us a pretty terrible shop and reliable source of information. Well, then they would talk. Um, they would talk crap to me about that too. Then, like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're always so brand. rigid. Well, what, yeah. what do you want, buddy? Which one do you want, buddy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just thought oh, that was a funny comment. I love uh, that. Hey, sometimes at least yeah, you took we, the time to make the comment. Appreciate that, buddy. Yeah, thanks thank for you. engaging on the video and boosting. You watched, our, our, yeah, you watched. <laughs> oh, so watch thank count. you for that. You may not have, <laughs> you may not have liked watching towards the end. You wanted to type that comment in real fast, but thanks for watching anyway. I mean, we're not All one right. of those channels, but there there are certainly channels out there that on purpose give incorrect information mm-hmm. or start a fire just mm-hmm. to see who will kick that and uh, yep. pour some gasoline on it, and then it lights up in the comments and does exactly what they want. Bingo. Um, we're not one of those those so we do welcome the, the engagement though all right moving on uh this one's an actual question and not uh, <laughs> not a statement hey, just so we're extended i've got i've got two i think yeah i've got okay two. 
I've okay. got two. So does that give you got how many? You got three. I got we got five today. We normally only do two or three. Yeah. I've got. You want me to jump total? in here? With my, I've got one here. I've got yeah, one ready. Go to ahead and hit me with one. Yeah. So all right. So this was from the uh, Jeep Gladiators group, and uh, our good friend at RPM Steering Don Rycraft actually answered this one. I'll give you three guesses as to how he answered it, but you're only going to need one. Um, so the question is: So I was looking at building a long arm for my Gladiator, and after looking at my tank placement, long, skinny driver side or passenger side next to the drive shaft between the drive shaft and the frame. It seems like I wouldn't be able to triangulate the rear. So I was looking and found this mid-arm kit, which is basically just stock stock length, and was wondering if anyone had experience with it. I was debating buying the rear kit and then building my own three-link long arm for the front. Input and thoughts are welcome. Just trying to decide which route to go. I'm eventually, I'm going to eventually put tons under it also. And he's got a picture of the Rusty's off-road kind of like hybrid weirdness I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this kit for a whole lot of reasons. I won't go into it. Uh, simple answer is, yes, you can absolutely triangulate a Gladiator. You can absolutely three-link long-arm the rear of a Gladiator. Up front, mm-hmm. you can do whatever the heck you want because it's a JL. Yeah. From, the, from the B pillar forward, that sucker's a JL. So anything that works in the front of a JL works in the front of a Gladiator uh, with some slight modification needed to some holes and whatnot if you're working on a Mojave but you can absolutely long arm the rear of a Gladiator. Rockcrawler has a kit. Uh, I actually answered this question and linked one kit. Rockcrawler has a kit that can be, they have a silverback kit, which is long arm front. It's still technically mid arm rear, but it changes some mounts and triangulates the rear and deletes the track bar. And then they have a long arm, three link, which keeps the track bar, but gives you a three link long arm. Um, just because the tank's there does not do that. They develop this stuff with that in mind, and actually the LCAs, the lower control arms, get mounted outboard of the frame and tucked mm-hmm. up on the long arm with their X2 geometry, which actually increases your ground clearance on those those rock grabbers, those control arms, which is pretty innovative there. Uh, I don't think anybody was really doing it at the time they put it out. Now there's a couple doing it, but Rock Crawl, I think, was the first. I think RPM's doing that now. Um, there's a couple other companies doing it now, but Rock Crawl, I think, was kind of the innovator there. So, yes, you can absolutely long arm a Gladiator front and rear, and you can also triangulate the rear which is obviously counterintuitive to a three link because triangulate you have to have four links so you can do both um you know rock crawler's got the three link rock crawler's got the triangulated i think rpm's got it i think evo even has something for that i would say yes and yeah and i think rusty's had something they have a weird their mounts are weird it's like an integrated it's a weird deal they do have a kit and rusty's is generally less expensive it's not rock crawler type quality but it is going to give you something to have that's lower price point not super familiar with them we don't sell a lot of it um it's just it's just not it's just not a thing in our world so um yeah but you can absolutely answer your question mr mr caleb your 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 other caleb caleb brent (laughs) um yes you can absolutely long arm you can absolutely triangulate the rear of a gladiator so yeah there we go absolutely and uh a triangulated gladiator travels a lot it does very very well yeah that's what the 392 was the 392 mm-hmm. was that kit it was on a long yeah. arm front and then triangulated rear with the track bar removed and we welded on the bridge to make it be able to off-road it didn't off-road much but we had it that no, but we had that set up I'm sure as hell drove great though i got a chance to drive that for a little that's while good. and i was, was super happy driving that around yeah. um cool so my question on that uh, comes from the counterpart to that group which is the wrangler jail group um this person said, I really need new tires. I would really like the KO3s, but they are not released in a 245, 75, 17 yet. I'm stuck between the Falcon Wild Peak ATs, KO2s, and a Nitto Ridge Grappler. I drive a lot, roughly 65 miles a day on the highway. I want something that looks aggressive while getting good gas mileage and isn't loud. So give me your thoughts. Um, I mean, if they're stuck on the KO3, I mean, just go to the KO2. Like, if you're buying it for looks... Then you're probably just going to do the Ko2. Um, I know the Ko3 is released, but he's probably looking. He's looking at a factory size. I mean, if you're set on the Ko3, find a size that you can fit and put it on there. Like if yeah. you're in a Jeep, you're in a Gla- you're in a Wrangler, you've got some availability there to change the size. Oh, absolutely. Um, so that would be my first recommendation. If you're set on the Ko3, not a bad tire at all. Um, then find it in a size that'll fit your wheel and give you will work with your scrub radius and all that, and just buy that. Um, you will not be disappointed with Falcon, whether you no. do the AT3 or the AT4. Great, great, great tires. 
Um, I've been to Falcon. I know that company well. Um, I run Falcon AT4s on the wife's lifted expedition. Um, she has told me countless times, this thing doesn't ride any different than it did when it was factory. Like, I, I don't, I wouldn't know that this thing is lifted. That's high praise. Um, Ridge Grappler, again, great tire. Um, very, very, very popular tire. It is a little more aggressive. I would not compare that to a KO3 or a Wild Peak um, yeah. AT, just because the RT is more of a uh, rugged terrain. It's more, it's, it's just as much MT as it is AT. If you're talking mm-hmm. AT, you got to be looking Recon Grappler or even kind of, especially if you're in the KO and the Falcon Wild Peak, you got to look at that new Terra Grappler G3. Oh, yeah. Those are the Absolutely. two. Um, the Ridge Grappler is better off-road. Um, the knock on the Ridge Grappler is it 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 tends to have some funny wear patterns at at the end of its life. But mm-hmm. we're talking 45, 50,000 miles. If the same more. can be said for the KO2. It gets the same knock. Yeah. It gets the same knock. Yeah. Um, the Falcon kind of doesn't. I think the Falcon's a little quieter, but is not the off-road performer that the Nitto is. Um, but again, when you're comparing those, the Recon Grappler, the Terra G3, um, the Falcon Wild Peak AT3, AT3 or AT4, um, and that KO2, KO3, you're not going to be dissatisfied with any of those. No, like, they're all You just reeled picks. off the top tires in the world yeah. for going, you know, for being an all-terrain tire. So I say it that, you know, then it comes down to, can you find one of those on sale? And what do you like the aesthetics of more, right? Yeah. Um, you're not going to be, you are not going to be dissatisfied with any of those picks. No, I 100% close. agree. Yeah. And I'm yeah. normally a pretty big proponent of Mickey Thompson and Nitto, but I think on that one, I would be very hard pressed not to run the Falcons um, just because that, I know how quiet they are. Legit, and how, man. Yeah. And yeah. in the in that size, in a 245, 75, 17, like that's, if that is bigger than factory, it's not much bigger. So you're pretty much doing a factory replacement. So I don't think you're going to be doing anything hardcore in it. So those Falcons are going to, they're great in the snow. It's a stock size on a sport, I think. Okay. That's the 17. Yeah. Yeah. That black, that just that flat black steel wheel they got. Yeah. That's a, yeah. uh, A sport or sport S. And uh, I'm with you. I would definitely go Baja boss AT. It's a great tire. I love that tire. Um, But if he's, I'm assuming there's a reason he's not looking at it. I assume maybe he doesn't like the looks of it or something. Yeah. Just tire tread patterns, man. It can be very subjective. Yeah. You know, like I love the way the BFG tread patterns look. My only knock on BFG has been, I just wish they measured. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's literally just that simple for me. And it's not really that big of a deal to most people. In some cases, when you're really tight on tires, you're like, hmm, let's put a BFG on there so it'll clear. Like, it's just that mm-hmm. it's just that much. They're a good tire. Again, the knock on BFG would be kind of what I said about the Nitto. They tend to wear, you got to really stay on top of alignments and all that. If you don't maintain, you're going to pay, you're going to pay the price. But I think that's any tire. Some tires are a little more forgiving. I do think the Falcon is a little more forgiving in that area. I do think the Mickey is a little more forgiving in that area. Nitto and BFG tend not to be as forgiving, but they're going to be your better off-road performers, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, hard to find a quieter one than the Falcon Wild Peak AT, either 3 or 4, or that Mickey Thompson Baja Boss AT. But, yeah, I think my first thing would just be to get a little bit bigger tire, go to a size they have released. If mm-hmm. you can, and just throw that on there and be happy. Yeah, absolutely. You want the even KO3, if it's, find yeah, a way to make it work. Even if it's just like a 33, I mean, it's still yeah, going to look pretty aggressive and look up. Yeah, yeah so. absolutely. Absolutely. Fit, no problem. So, what's a, uh, you got one, you got another one, right? I do. I have one more. This one comes from uh, Chris Cohen in NC Gladiators, a local gladiator group. I'm on the gladiators today. You never know. I sell a gladiator and I get a bunch of gladiator questions. But a lot of this stuff applies, you know. The last gladiator, quite half of it applies to jail. So, yeah, yes, absolutely. you can also triangulate a JL. And yes, you can also, you know, yeah, you can do that. It's a little easier to triangulate in a gladiator. You're not, you're going to be doing some weird stuff in a Wrangler, Rockzilla to get it, to get it triangulated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot more work, a lot more cutting. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. Uh, Mr. Chris Cohen says, okay, guys, I got another question. 24 gladiators, gladiator, 1600 miles. I got new wheels and tires a few weeks back. I kind of felt maybe the Jeep was sluggish, maybe. It felt heavy is how I'm trying to describe it. This is my first Jeep, so there's some unfamiliarity here. So just getting out of the Jeep just now, I noticed brake dust on one wheel while the other seemed pretty clean. No lights or anything on like that. Any suggestion other than take it to the dealership, which I will more than likely do anyway unless there's something I can do myself. 
Also, coming from a GMC Canyon, my gauges read quite different. Are these numbers looking legit to you at all? I've seen the trans tip go into the high 190s. Also, this was 6 a.m., blah, blah, blah. blah. He, he posted a picture of some gauges. His temperatures are fine. Let's just tell you that. Mr. Mr. Chris Cohen, your temperatures are fine. Um, let's talk about that sluggish. A couple of reasons that can happen. Generally, if you went bigger, you're going to feel sluggish because of the gearing. It does not sound, he does not say he went bigger, and he only made reference to one wheel. Generally speaking, if you get it feeling sluggish and you're feel, you see brake dust, excessive brake dust on one wheel, you generally have a sticking or pulling caliper, brake caliper, mm. that is constantly applying at least some brake pressure to one of the calipers, and it is causing that slow, sluggish feel. Um, I felt that last year at Crandon when my brakes were basically on fire and they were stuck, <laughs> sticky, and it felt like I, it felt yeah. like I was racing with a motorhome behind me. I, I felt yeah. like I was pulling a trailer. That was the feeling I had, and that was my brakes grabbing. Now, it was mostly left, but the right was the, the left one's actually what caught on fire. Um, but the right was sticking too, and, and I felt that, and I knew that. And sometimes you can tell um, just by if it, if it kind of pulls one way, um, it might pull to the right front of that right. But sometimes it's just, just enough to where um, you're, you're just feeling a little bit of that sluggishness. I don't think that has anything to do with your wheels and tires. It shouldn't. Your brakes don't really get touched during you know having wheels and tires put on, so I wouldn't like you know jump out and blame the shop for that. Uh, unless they were in there doing brake work or something, who knows? The sixteen hundred mile thing is a little weird, so um, that's probably going to be a warranty issue. Um, just be aware of the dealers. You know how dealers are. Some dealers just try to make them make it difficult. So just be ready to say no, Magnus and Moss. You can't say my wheels and tires cause this. So not saying they will do that. Some dealerships are cool, um, but it sounds like it's just a sticking caliper issue. Very common issue. Obviously not as common on a newer vehicle, but it does. It can happen. I've experienced that myself more times than I remember. It's a thing. Um, and that would explain your brake dust. That would explain, um, that would also explain your sluggishness and you're just feeling like you're kind of drugged down. So that, that would be the first thing. If assuming, since you didn't say you went bigger, I'm assuming you didn't go bigger. Um, and then mentioning just the excessive brake dust on one wheel makes me think sticking brake caliper. So I would start with the brake caliper. I agree. So it sounds like yeah, you better. <laughs> <laughs> Brakes are not my forte, but uh, no, it definitely sounds like something is. is I going on I there. tried to I kept my yeah. for whatever reason I kept my ASE A five certification for fifteen years. I guess there was no reason, no reason for me to do that. But I was at one time I had A five, which is brakes. I had A four, which was steering and suspension. I had A eight, which was engine performance. I had C1, which was service consulting. I had G1, which was maintenance and light repair. And I had P2, which was certified part specialist. Nice. Talk yeah, about, wow. I mean, it was like every six months, I was like, good Lord, I got to take another research test. Good Lord, I got to take another research test. But you get into these research tests, and at some point, it's just going into this test center, and you just go, yep, 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 I already know yep, this, yep. I already know this, I already know this. <laughs> and then you maintain. Right. I used to wear a patch on one of my, one of my work shirts when I actually worked out in the shop that had my ASEs on it. And I decorated my sleeve up in the day back 10, 15 years ago. Oh, I would go to work with a decorated sleeve. And then I realized half the people out there don't even know what ASC certification is anymore. So I think, yeah. I think 21 or 22 during COVID, I never renewed anything. And I was like, I'm not even in the shops mostly anymore. What I need to be certified in is putting out fires and helping people with their business. So that's right. not a patch for that. Not a patch for that. So yeah, no, I can design one. Though. <laughs> but I mean, brake systems are brake systems. Steering and suspension is steering and suspension. That not much has changed there. So if you know it, right. if you know it, you know it. And that's that's what makes that's what definitely makes the most sense to me. Yep. So. Well, I've got one more before we uh end off the show on a pretty good note. Right. Um this one also from Wrangler Trail. Uh I'm having a really hard time with death bobble and my tires getting chopped. Took it to the local off-road shop, they tightened a few bolts and found a crack in the bracket that holds the steering stabilizer to the axle. It does have fixed control arms with drop down brackets, so the caster can't be corrected. I really want to go adjustable control arms so I can get more a more precise alignment, uh, but I can't decide if I want to do just the front or front and rear. Can anyone talk me through and give me some insight? This is something we've actually covered on uh, on this podcast before of there was, uh, control arms and, and after it. yeah, um, that I would encourage you to go watch. It's the Do You Need All Eight Control Arms episode. Yes. First of all, let's talk about the safety, potential safety issue you've got going on here. 
with a crack in the bracket where the steering stabilizer hits the axle because now if that's the factory bracket on a JL that's just its own bracket and it's cracked, who cares? Nobody, no, you know, whatever. It might break. Who cares? You lose a steering stabilizer, you're going to hear a clunk. If that thing has been relocated, if you have aftermarket steering and it's cracked on that bracket, that's a track bar bracket. Stop driving. Yeah. <laughs> that's bad. Um, yeah. yeah, if you ever notice, and, and that could cause the death wobble. Now, I'm assuming it's just an OE bracket because he took it to a shop. They tightened some stuff up. Death wobble, it appears, went away. And I don't think the real question is about the death wobble. I think the real question here is about the arms. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, um, I know Metal Cloak does this differently. They start with front uppers. Every Almost everybody else starts with front lowers. Um, there's generally three stages. Most companies have taken this down to two. Stage one would be front control arms adjustable front control arms because you're getting the length because I always do like I do the uh, the napkin test I'm going to do this I'm going to do this right now if you do if you put a napkin down on the table and you put the center of it in there and you pull the napkin up from the middle what happens to the outside it goes whoop, it comes in axles are the edge of that napkin or the edge of that piece of paper in this in this analogy they rotate in and up so that is going to reduce your caster angle. That is the the front to back turn of the axle. Um, by if you lift it two and a half degrees, it's probably going to drop it by two to two and a half degrees, and you're going to feel that when you drive. So geo brackets are kind of the cheaper, easier way to do that. They change the mount point down to where you still want that in a JL. It's 24 inches instead of having to go with something that's like 24 and a quarter, 24 and five sixteenths, 24 and three eighths, whatever, depending on your lift height. Um, it makes a difference. A quarter of an inch and eighth of an inch makes a difference. So generally, most what I would call a, the base level of a complete kit will call will do something to address front caster. Um, now that doesn't address rear pinion. Generally, at that lift height, it's not that big of a deal. At two and a half, even to three and a half, is when you start looking at it. But again, you're doing the same thing. You're rotating that axle, so the rear uppers are generally the quickest, easiest way to adjust rear pinion. That's the pinion angle. We don't care about caster. There's no steering back there, but we do care about pinion, which is basically if I take the pinion pointing out the, the front of that differential and I'm, I want as straight a line as I can get pointing at that transfer case. Pinion being off is it's like this or it's like this or it's not, it's not flat. It's not a flat line. We, want it, we don't want it like this or this. We want it like this. So pinion being that kind of zeroed in, that's what we want. Rear uppers can do that. Um, after four, you jump right to eight because at eight, we're, we're addressing caster, but we're not addressing the pulling in. We're only addressing the rotation. Mm-hmm. At four, now we're still addressing the pulling in on the front and the pulling in on the rear, but we're still not addressing the pulling, the actual shrinking of the wheelbase. We're only addressing the turning of the axle itself. When I get all eight arms, I can now address all of those problems. I can address caster up front. I can address pinion angle out back, but I can also make everything on its own back to the original length, the original wheelbase, um, you know, 118, I think 118 point whatever, 118 point 200 on the JL, um, 108, we'll just call it 118 inches. When you're lifting it and you're not addressing those, you're actually shortening the wheelbase, which has its own, which causes its own issues. But with all eight arms, you've now created that. You can even stretch it a half inch or an inch or so. In some cases, you can do that. Um, so that's why you would do two. That's why you would do four. And that's why you do eight. There's really no point in doing six. I'm not a mat. Rock crawler actually used to have a level in the middle. They called it the two which would do for most companies now. I think Terraflex does it. JKS does it. About half the companies who used to do 248 now only do 28. Yeah. You know, there's a jump. Now, you not to say you couldn't buy the two. I have customers that do that all the time. You know, control arms make great Christmas presents, so we can start them out with the four, and then, you know, maybe they can ask their husband or wife for an anniversary gift or, you know, Valentine's or whatever, Christmas, you know, Kwanzaa gifts, Hanukkah, whatever, Fourth of July, Independence Day, Chinese New Year, Chinese New uh, Year. Any, control arms any for Chinese gift, really. New Year. Uh, it's all good. So, yeah. So I would, you know, look at look at, look at at it that way. It's two, it's four, it's eight. Four would just kind of be in certain circumstances, but two and eight, and that's what you're getting. You got to address the turning of the axle, identified as caster on the front, pinion on the rear, and then wheelbase uh, being the, you know, that napkin trick, you know, the pulling in and shrinking that wheelbase. So there you go. Has nothing to do with myself. the stabilizer part of the question. No, at no, no, all. no. We're going to overlook that. <laughs> uh, and hopefully that is not a I don't know how A cr- met B there. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully that's not a cracked track bar br- bracket. But God, uh, I hope yeah, not. just to answer the question on the on the control arms. Yeah, that's that's what I would do as well. 
But that is um, that is all the mailbag bag I have for you today. Even though that was extended, um, that is it. Yeah, that was a good one. I like that. I you know we had to address some of the I had to address. I love it when people send the hater aid. Maybe oh, yeah, he just absolutely. typed that comment because he saw the last episode we did, and he's like, "I'm going to see if I can get on the episode." And you know what? Congratulations, bro! You did. Hey, you did it. You did. <laughs> you did. You got on the episode. So, all yeah. right. Well, that is where we were going. We are going to leave it. Um, I know everybody's listening to this while it's. Jeep Invasion, but I have not left for Jeep Invasion yet because obviously we filmed these before. I have got to go back to the Jeep and get this thing finished. I got to get out of town. I got to get to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I got to go see all of my off-road industry and peoples. Um, Some people I don't get to see very often. So I'm going to go see some outlaws. I'm going to go see some people. I know I get to go see some rock crawler people. I'm going to go see some revolution gear and axle people. I'm going to go see some, who else am I going to see? Some next venture people. I'm going to go see all the people. I'm going to see all the people. I'm going to do all the things. I'm going to drive. I'm going to be a total mall crawler this week. Uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, as always, as we do on every episode, we cannot end these episodes without thanking you guys, the listeners and the viewers, for checking us out and spending your time with us. Wherever you may be watching or listening and whenever you may be watching or listening, we thank you. Uh, if this is your first time with us, thank you, too. But don't forget. Hit that like and subscribe. Hit that notification icon if you're checking us out on YouTube. Make sure you get that notification every time a new episode drops, which is, in general, unless craziness happens, pretty much every Friday. That is what we do. That is how we do it. So find us wherever you are. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on Spotify. We are on YouTube and YouTube Podcast, and hopefully very soon we will be on iHeartRadio. But if you ain't going to find us on one of those spots, do you even podcast, bro? Or probably not. Debt, do that. You probably don't. You don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't. So yes, that is where we are going to leave it. Uh, Caleb, I will see you uh, next week. I will not be seeing you at Jeep Invasion, but I will see you next week here on another episode of Dirt to Dust, presented by the Outlaw Off Road. Peace out, everybody. See you guys later. Have a great weekend. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.